Hi guys, Simon here and today I want to talk again about flow maps. What you see here is a project and there are um, several other videos and an article if you want to have more details about the whole project you can read and watch um, those. But here what we see is um, a dummy texture, a foam texture which is moved along a river geometry. And um, um, a flow map baked from Houdini is responsible for moving the texture along the river and also making care uh, uh, making sure that the water is flowing um, around these obstacles here. And in this video we want to talk about these particle systems because what I wanted is first placing particle systems uh, there where the obstacles are intersecting with the water. Also the particle systems should point against the flow of the uh, flow map basically or of the river uh, flow um, so that the particles fly yeah, uh, against the floating direction and also that the particles are placed only there where the water um, crashes uh, most strongly against the obstacle so that at the back there should be no particle or maybe there could be other particle systems which are not as strong as these ones but here are the biggest forces right so that's why I wanted to have them only there doesn't look perfect now but uh, I found it was an interesting technical challenge and maybe you are interested in it too. If you want to have them everywhere then that's not a problem um, at all. So okay but now let's look at this. Uh, how this looks in Houdini. How we make this happen. Okay here you see um, the river geometry and the obstacles and these little pink things are um, geometries which are replaced in um, Unreal with, for example, particle systems. And I explained how this works in another video. You can watch this, I think it's called instancing or something. And it's uh, also really interesting because, uh, yeah, it, it, there's a lot of uh, useful stuff you can do with that. Um, anyway, let's um, go into the network. I won't uh, rebuild the whole thing. I will just click on the nodes and show how everything is done. Um, so we start with the um, input geometry, which is this one. Uh, this is one of our inputs we will use. This is a pink yeah, geometry, nothing more, it's just a dummy. Then we have the river and um, this river has to its um, primitives and points the flow vectors assigned. Yeah, This is coming from, from here, from these nodes here. This is the node where um, uh, a guide, a spline, uh, defines the flow and stores the flow into the vertices of the geometry. Then we have the river geometry. This is the geometry you actually see in the game and is uh, has way less uh, polygons. And then we have the obstacles. Um, yeah, and those are the obstacles. So the first thing what we have to do is find the intersection between the river and the obstacle. And this is super easy because there is this great note here, the intersection analysis. And uh, yeah, it does what um, the name tells you. It uh, analyzes the intersections and places these points there. Um, and we are already uh, almost there. So um, at these points you could place now your little uh, the little pink geometry and then everything would be fine uh, maybe but these are too many we don't want to have 100 million um, particle systems in our scene so what I am doing is I using a fuse node and here with this little slider you can now easily define how many points you want to keep and um, yeah and, and with that tell how many particle systems should be placed there before I uh, chose random points with a little wrangle node and just remove them but this uh, led to the um, problem that sometimes you would still have points really near to each other and then a big gap in between and here you can get a more um, yeah, uh, equalized uh, impression I would say so they are yeah, placed in equal amounts uh, with equal distance and uh, this is the fuse node and here and here I have to Thank, let's say, um, thanks to Lange or Lange, uh, however you pronounce it. In German, it would be Lange. Um, uh, thanks a lot because he helped me with this approach. Because what I want to do is, I want to, I I want to copy the normals of the obstacles here. They're pointing outward, right? And I want to use these normals 
four the intersection points so that the particle systems point into these directions and I couldn't find out how this works and he told me you to use the ray sub thing node and here you can see these um, these options and as you can see it's perfect yeah it works perfect the um, normals are copied from these obstacles and that that's really really cool and yeah you have to set minimum distance i think transform points was on by default but must be off and then point intersection normal you can see here everything and yeah it just uh, works and gives you these normals or copies them to these points okay and now comes a little bit more magic but don't worry it's not too complicated because what I do, I, I have in um, from the river the flow, right? The vectors pointing into that direction. And now I compare my or uh, this direction with the direction from the normals of these points. And only if um, uh, this direction points against the flow, I want to keep these points. So I want to keep these points here, right? Because they're yeah, uh, pointing against the flow direction. And these points back here, I don't want to keep. And to do that, there's a really useful thing because we know already that um, with this uh, sub flow map to color node, we can let me disable this. We can have uh, our river and uh, let me disable the flow map uh, vector visualization. Yeah, we can bake our flow map into the colors of our vertices. Okay. But also what is created, and this is this I didn't know, and thanks to to, Lise, uh, to Louise uh, from the Thinking uh, Procedural Discord channel, um, yeah, uh, he, he told me that there's also an attribute created which is called just V. And this keeps the normal as well. The normal of the flow map uh, or the flow map vector, let's say. It's not a normal, um, even though there, there is normal here. So it is a normal, but it's the flow map vector. That's what I want to say, okay, V. And this we can sample and then compare the directions let me enable the visual flow again and then go in here so i i use by the way the version where the obstacles are not taken into account this is the um, uh, the node here the first one where the um, uh, the spline just guides the flow vectors um here's is the spline coming here's the geometry coming and this guide defines in which direction uh, the flow vectors should be created on the geometry and this i use i, I found it works better than having um, turbulences from the uh, from the obstacles in your normals for your little points here yeah for these points um okay so and now we compare them so and that happens here so um the first input is the points these points is the first input here and the second input is yeah just what we saw the river geometry with the flow map vectors and when we go in here we see we have a little input and we use the uh, current point activate this maybe um so and then what we are doing is we're taking the point here our little point and moving it upward uh, about one unit so we take out the vertical um component of the current position add one um, combine everything again and from there we shoot a ray cast down and this we do here so we sh shoot it down length is 10 and the direction is negative down um, and we if we hit something the primitive is returned the primitive number here and the primitive number goes into this node and here we ask hey primitive do you have an attribute v and if so please tell us what it is so um, it returns basically the flow vector of the primitive we just hit with our ray cast uh, and yeah outputs it to the next node we will look into this uh, to this in a second and as you can see here the file is the the second input and remember the second input here this is the derivative geometry with our flow map vectors okay so output two goes in here and now we know aha uh, no here and now we know mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, we, we we just read out the, the vector from our flow map so that's really cool and what happens now 
we ignore the uh, horizontal alignment. Let me show this to you when I activate the normals and use the, the river normals. Sometimes, let me see where I can find a good spot. Sometimes they point a little bit upward and downward. I don't see, oh yeah, of course I should use this one. So here, for example, they point, obviously, because the river goes down, um, downward and upward, and I didn't want it this. Uh, maybe I could even use it, but um, I decided to remove this um, yeah, vertical orientation. So that looks like this, okay? And now, and I do the same for the actual normal of uh, this point. And the actual normal of this point, we saw this before, looks like this. Yeah, this is the normal we copied from our obstacles. And the, the, um, the vector, flow vector we got from our raycast looks like this. Yeah, it's just the direction of the flow. That's not a big surprise because that was exactly what we asked for. And now I compare these um, both. Yeah, uh, this vector and this vector is now um, compared with a dot product. And the dot product re um, returns a value from minus one to plus one, depending on uh, the angle in between these vectors. And then I have a little snippet here. So this is the dot, um, and this is the, the little snippet. And I just say, hey, when the dot result is bigger than a certain threshold, then remove the current point. And this threshold is, is defined here, variable, variable two is the threshold, and the dot result is a variable one. And as you can see here, the dot uh, return uh, result goes in first. So this is dot result, and then is here my little threshold. And when I change this value, you will see that more and more points are added or removed, uh, yeah, depending on the threshold. Uh, so when I so now there are more and more coming in, and this this was the original situation, right? And when I remove, uh, when I when I set the threshold to lower values, then more and more are uh, removed on this backside here, which is basically pointing away from the river um, flow direction. Yeah, and I found for me a value of minus o five seems to work pretty well. Um, yeah, and that's it basically. And um, yeah, I'm uh, here I compare the values and yeah, everything is explained now, <laughs> I would say. And now the next node, and here the most important thing is the packend instance, is where we copy our little pyramid to these points and to make them oriented into the correct direction. That's why we need the normal because they are oriented along the normal. And uh, remember, this was just a little pyramid in the middle, and this is the first input, and the second input is the points. And when we combine both, then we get little pyramids everywhere. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And it's important to set this uh, checkbox pack an instance, because if you don't, then Unreal doesn't know that you actually want to copy things to these areas. Okay, that's it basically, right? This flows into my output here. Um, so this is what we see when we look at the scene in total. We see Thrawang and the river and our little things here. And then I go upward with uh, U, save everything and wait until it's done. And then hopefully when I switch to Unreal and remove this from my scene and then drag and drop it again in, set the position and wait a little bit until it's finished baking. Then we should see the river. And you will notice that some materials are already auto assigned. I explained that in another video as well, how to um, assign existing materials, which are existing in Unreal, and then uh, assign them automatically uh, after building your Houdini digital asset. Super useful here. And you see 
our little um, uh, pink uh, thingies here. And when you go into the Houdini instance inputs and open the first one, I think, yeah, then you see here is our little pink thing. And when I now drag and drop the, my particle system for the obstacles there, then it takes a short second and now um, everything works. And when you enable the view for yeah, these uh, helpers, you will see that hmm, the orientation is not perfect, but you can just here uh, rotate everything by 90 degrees and now they are pointing into the correct direction. And uh, I will hide these again with G. And yeah, you see that we have our um, particle systems at the correct um, um, side of the obstacle pointing into the correct direction and everything um, works everywhere and now we could think about uh, yeah i don't know uh, placing more or less um, or yeah whatever you prefer thanks for watching bye bye